Now in this last part of the question, we've got our graph then of y equals f of x and the turning points t and s. And we've got to sketch the graph y equals the mod of f of x. What does the mod mean? Well, it essentially means that all the values coming out of this have got to be positive. All the y values must be positive. Well, all the y values round here are positive except these values down here. You can clearly see they're going to be negative values. So whatever these values are, they become positive. So what this generates is a reflection of this part of the curve in the x-axis. So instead of this part going down here, what happens is it just gets reflected up like this. So what we have is this part of the curve then becomes this, but the remaining part of the curve stays exactly the same. So you should end up basically just tracing over the top of the curve like so. All right? And that gives us our curve. You might want to just extend this up a bit further. That's up to you. That's on the assumption that this carries on down here. We had to mark in the turning points so we can see that the turning points, let's just uh, write them in, turning points, where they're going to be. Well, this turning point stays the same, so that's going to be at 7, 2. And this turning point stays exactly the same, so that's going to be at 3, 5. No change in those. Well, I'm just going to remove the red graph so you can see what we should be drawing then. This is the graph then of y equals the mod of f of x with our turning points at 3, 5 and at 7, 2. Okay.
cos theta or the quadrant method.